Hey guys and welcome back to another Raspberry Pi tutorial. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to use this PIR motion detector. Now we're going to get right into it and I'm going to explain to you guys what this is and what we're going to be doing is essentially seeing when this thing detects some kind of motion we're going to turn on a nice little green LED using some GPIO pins on our Raspberry Pi and a breadboard. So let's get right into it and first start by discussing what is a PIR sensor and how does this work. Now I'm pretty sure that this stands for passive infrared radar. Now what that means is it's going to check for infrared rays to determine whether or not something has passed in front of it or not. Now if you don't know what infrared rays are, essentially they're just a wavelength um, similar to kind of like radio waves or microwaves or something like that. They're just on a different frequency and essentially any living breathing thing like us humans give off infrared rays and they're commonly seen as like heat. So if you look at kind of a heat map, then you'll be looking at essentially infrared wa waves. And what this does is detect the change in infrared waves. So it can tell when something's in front of it because it's looking at those wavelengths that obviously as humans we can't see, but this thing can detect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just plugging this into our breadboard anywhere vertically so that these three pins here, negative, positive, and S are in different rows of the breadboard. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire up some of the stuff to our Raspberry Pi on these GPIO pins and then plug it into our breadboard and add the LED. Now before we do that, I just wanna talk quickly about what's actually on this sensor. So you should see if I get this to focus well enough, there's two little kind of plus signs, like they look like dials almost, uh, that you can mess with and actually move on this sensor. So the left one here is actually the sensitivity. So how sensitive this sensor is, um, to the change in infrared waves. Now for me, I've just turned mine all the way to the left, which means as least sensitive as possible because it's already like super sensitive to start. And then on the right side here, this is actually the duration in which we're gonna give off a signal if we send if we send some kind of motion. So I've turned this one all the way to the left as well because in our code, we're gonna handle how long to do certain things based on motion or not. But if you turn this all the way to the right side here, so just by sticking that in and going to the right, then what's gonna happen is when this detects motion for a really long time, there's gonna be current that flows out of this S pin and goes into our Raspberry Pi and says that there is motion even though maybe there might not be. It's just how long it's triggering a signal to come out. And you guys can mess with that and you'll probably be able to experiment and see what I mean. So now what I'm gonna do is just plug in some jumper wires that again, you're gonna need. There's a link in the description if you don't already have some of these. They're really cheap again. You can get them for a few bucks off Amazon. And we're gonna need ones that have female on one end and male on the other end like that. So what I'm gonna do is plug in three of these to start into my Raspberry Pi and then we'll plug in a fourth one as well. So we're gonna start by plugging one into the five volt pin, which is the pin on the very bottom right. So that should focus in for you guys. Then we're gonna skip one pin, go to the left and plug in this white wire to what's known as the ground pin. So you can see here that we have, if it focuses up in just a second here, uh, we have a black wire, we skip one, and then we go with the white wire onto that ground pin. Now, directly above the white wire and one to the left, we're gonna plug into our fourth GPIO pin, and it, that should look like that now. So you can see at the top, we're gonna be going, I've actually plugged this one into the wrong one, it needs to go one over to the right here. We're gonna be plugging into that fourth pin on the top row, and then the bottom pin here on the right, and three over. Now we need one more wire like this. Uh, unfortunately, I only have another black one, but I'm gonna essentially skip one pin on this top row from our orange one and plug that in there to our other GPIO pin. Uh, now, if I'm not mistaken, I should have plugged everything in correctly, and now we can actually use these to go right into the breadboard. Now, important fact, make sure that this is off while you're doing this. Otherwise, you might run into some errors where you short a circuit and you don't wanna damage your Raspberry Pi. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug all of these into our breadboard properly. Now this orange wire is gonna go directly into our sensor and it's actually gonna go on S. So you see how we have, if I can get in here, negative, positive S, this one is gonna go right in line with S like that. Now this is what's actually gonna take um, essentially current from this sensor and tell our Raspberry Pi whether or not we have motion or not. Now for our five volt wire, which is this one, and for our ground pin or ground wire, which is this white one, what we're gonna do is plug into the terminals on the board. So positive is gonna be for five volt and negative is gonna be for ground. So we'll plug those in here. Um, 
like that. And now we're gonna use this one for the LED in just one second. So now we're gonna need some more jumper wires, but in this case, these ones are actually gonna be male to male. So they'll have this connector on both sides. Hopefully you guys can see that all right. And what we're gonna do is plug this into the rail here. So we're gonna put one wire on that negative rail or positive there and one wire on this negative rail. And we're gonna plug these directly now into our sensor like this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug negative to negative. So we're gonna plug ground into the negative pin here. And I'll zoom in on this in a second so you guys can really get a good idea and see this. And then we're gonna plug in our other wire which will be this blue one into the positive. So if I can actually fit that in here, it's a little bit tricky to get in. Um, there we go. All right, so now you should see that we have three wires connected here and that our negative is obviously going to negative here, our positive is going to positive, and then this orange wire is going directly into our Raspberry Pi. Now the reason I've done that and plugged it into the rail rather than just right into the sensor is because I need to turn on the LED using the um, negative terminal here. So what I'm gonna do is now take my LED it has a short end and a long end. So the long end is actually on the bottom, the short end is on the top, and this long end is what's gonna get signal from a GPI open, and the short end is gonna go right into our negative uh, rail. Now we're also gonna use a resistor to make sure that we're not flowing too much current into the LED and that it doesn't pop and explode on us. So just bear with me for one second here, guys, and we'll get this wired up, and then we'll get right into the code and figure out how all this actually works. So what I'm gonna do is plug a resistor in so that it lines up on this negative rail somewhere. So we'll put one end into this negative rail and the other end is just gonna go somewhere into our breadboard, so any of these rows here. Now we're gonna plug the short end of our LED, so this top end here, if I get this to focus, so it's in line with the resistor. So we'll plug it in like that and I'll zoom in on this in just a second. And then what we're gonna do is plug in this final black wire here so that it's in line with the long end because this is where it's gonna be getting current. So now if you have a look at our breadboard, you can see that we have a resistor that goes into this uh, negative rail, so the blue strip here, which then eventually obviously is gonna go into the Raspberry Pi. And then we have the GPIO pin, which is the second black wire we plugged in, plugged into the long end of our um, what do you call it, uh, LED here. And then we have that plugged into a resistor, which is going there. Finally, our sensor is obviously getting positive, negative, and S, and that S is gonna be what's actually sending a signal to our Raspberry Pi. All right, so that's it for the wiring. Now we can go ahead and plug in our Raspberry Pi, and we'll get right into the code and figure out how we can turn on this LED by detecting motion. All right, so I'm here on my Raspberry Pi, and now we're gonna write the program that essentially will allow this to work. Now I have my Raspberry Pi plugged in. I'm gonna try to show you guys I have this hooked up now. And just make sure that your sensor is in a place where you'll be able to like wave your hand in front of it or like get out of the way or something like that uh, to test this out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if I can get in IDLE here, from GPIO zero, import, and we're gonna do the same import we did before, which is LED. And we're gonna do the same thing now. So from GPIO zero, import motion sensor sensor like that now what we're going to do is similar to before we're just going to define which one the motion sensor is and which one the led is so which gpio pin we're using so we're going to say green underscore led which is the one i'm using is equal to led and this is going to be on gpio pin 17 and we're going to say pir which is our sensor is going to be equal to motion sensor so motion sensor, and then that is on GPIO pin four. Now, all we're gonna do is write a very basic while loop that's gonna turn on our LED while we have motion and turn it off when we don't have motion. So to do this, we're gonna say while true, and in here, we are going to say uh, PIR dot wait underscore four underscore motion. Now, what this does is exactly what it says. It's gonna wait on this line until we get motion. Now, as soon as we get motion, it's gonna execute, it's gonna to go to the next line and run the program. So we're gonna say prr.wait for motion. We're gonna print motion detected like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the LED. So we do that by saying green underscore LED dot on. Now, after that, what we're gonna do is say prr.wait 
underscore for underscore no motion. Now this works the same. It's uh, simply says we're going to wait until there's no motion detected. So right now, since we got motion detected, we know something's moving around. So as soon as something stops moving, then what we'll do is we'll say green underscore LED dot off and we'll print uh, motion stopped. Okay. And now if we actually run this, this should work. Now we're going to start off. I'm just going to add one line up here that just says green underscore LED dot off just to make sure it starts off off because sometimes if you exit this program by quitting it uh, and the green LED is on, it's just going to stay on because you haven't turned it off yet. So now if we run this and we're in front of the sensor, we should see immediately that that LED turns on and we get on our console motion detected. Now let's run this and test it out. So pressing F5 here and you should see that right away mine actually says uh, motion detected and that's because I am right in front of this motion sensor like this. Now it says motion stopped. And you can see that now the LED is actually on because we have motion detected. Now, as soon as I stop moving, so if I put this down and I don't move, it should say motion stopped. And if I put my hand in front of it, it's going to be motion detected and you get the point. Now, it's really difficult to see that my LED is actually on right now uh, because it's like super dull. But for you guys, you shouldn't be as dull and you should be able to see it. But if I were to remove the resistor from mine, then it would be easier to see. But that essentially is how that works. Uh, it's a really cool idea to use maybe if you want to log like when motion starts and when motion stops, maybe see if someone's coming into your room or something like that. All you have to do essentially is leave this program running and then it's going to detect when someone comes in the room and comes out of the room as long as you have that sensor in a pretty good area. The kind of scope for the sensor is pretty wide. So as long as it's somewhere where it can maybe see the door or something like that, then that'll work well. And yeah, that's kind of how that works. So I hope you guys got some value from this video and now you know how to use the PIR motion sensor. They're really cool and I've just been showing you really basic examples with super simple code on how to run these, but incorporating them with like a surveillance system or something like that is what I want to do in future videos. So let me you guys know, let me know if you guys have any ideas on what you'd like to see with some of these sensors and the knowledge I've been showing and I'll definitely uh, probably put something out like that in the future. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again.